You're listening to the Music Tech Teacher Podcast, episode number three. Welcome to the Music Tech Teacher Podcast. Music tech tips, lesson ideas, advice, news and interviews, especially for music teachers. Brought to you by midnightmusic.com.au. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Music Tech Teacher Podcast. I'm your host Katie Wardrobe and thank you so much for tuning in. In today's episode I wanted to share some formative assessment tools that you can use with your music students that make student testing fun for both the students and for you as well hopefully. Before we start you can find the show notes for this episode, that's a list of all the links and the other information that I'm going to cover in today's show at midnightmusic.com.au forward slash three and that's just the number three. There comes a time when all music teachers need to test student learning and find out what it is that they've picked up from your lesson and hopefully it's the same things that you're intending that they will actually pick up. Sometimes you need to test students at the beginning of the school year to determine their level of knowledge as they're coming into your class or sometimes it's halfway through a class to find out whether students are on track with that just that specific lesson. And sometimes you need to test at the end of a lesson when you might give students something like an exit ticket, which is a very short test to see if they understood the main aims of the lesson that you just gave. And then other times you might need to give them a quiz, which is at the end of maybe a whole unit of work just to test their overall learning. So all of that's nothing new, but there are some great tools, uh, technology tools that you can use to run those tests and quizzes. Using technology to create these tests does have actually a lot of benefits to it. It can make those tests or quizzes more engaging because you can use multimedia. So things like audio files and video files and images that can make the test much more engaging for students. It can means you can also reuse individual questions in many cases or even entire quizzes across your different classes. So that can be a big time saver. You might use the same test with different classes that you're teaching which are all at the same year level or you might even use the same test with the same class at different points in the year to see how the students have progressed over time. Now many of the tech tools allow you to search for existing quizzes and tests that have been created by other teachers. Now that can be a massive time saver because you can use the quiz as it is perhaps or if it's not quite right you can usually make a copy and adjust that for your own purposes. So you can take out questions of, of things that your own students may not have covered or maybe you want to add something in there. Another time saving feature of using technology to create quizzes is that often the tech tool will do the grading for you. So um, this is a massive benefit I think, it means that you don't have to do your own grading. It will keep track of whether the students got questions right or wrong and will often give you the results in a format which is really useful like in a spreadsheet format which you can then um, see at a glance your whole class's results um, but it also means that you can maybe import it into your own school learning management system if you're using one of those. Now there is one downside to using technology to set up these quizzes especially when you want to include things like images and audio and video and that downside is the time that you need to invest in setting up the quiz in the first place. Now although there's an investment in time I really really do think it's worthwhile. It's, um, it is an investment but it pays off in a big way because you can reuse the test as I mentioned earlier. So I would definitely take the time to do it. I think it's well worth it. And if you can find a few friends um, who are teaching perhaps the same sorts of things that you are doing, you could each assign, you know, as a group, you could assign different tests to, to be created in certain tools that you can then share with one another. And that will be a time saving factor. Today I want to share four of my favourite tech tools for formative assessment. And the great thing about all four of these is that they're free to use. The first one is Kahoot. Now some of you might have already used Kahoot before. I do find that it's, um, of all of these, it's the one that more people are familiar with already. And it's a game style quiz tool that gives students points for correct answers, but also for speed. So if students answer their questions quickly, they um, are further up on the leaderboard. And if they answer them correctly, but they're a little bit slower, they're a little bit further down the leaderboard. 
Um, you need to pick your audience for this one. It's not going to suit all students, but um, particularly middle school students, I think, find this really enjoyable. It becomes a little bit competitive, but in a fun way, usually. And uh, believe me, in adults that I've trained in workshops, <laughs> they've all loved it as well. So it can be lots of fun and very engaging. And it can make some of those drier type topics quite exciting. So I use one in my um, workshops when I'm showing this tool and it's it's literally just a test on major key signatures and believe me um, it's it's a lot of fun and people get quite excited and very competitive and want to make sure that they get the answers correct so so lots of fun there. Now in, in terms of answering the questions all students actually do need a device to answer the questions in Coot. I'm going to um, talk a little bit more about some other tools which don't require students to have a device, but they, they will need some sort of device. Now, if you're at a school where students don't each have their own device, and perhaps um, if you're working in the elementary um, age group, you can actually run this as a team thing. So you don't have to have really every single student with a device. Um, if you've got enough for each team to have their own device to submit answers, that would work really well. And Kahoot actually has a team or a group option when you're starting up your quiz. In terms of devices that students can use to answer the questions, uh, it can be anything, which is great. There's a lot of flexibility with this one. So you can use laptops or desktop computers, either Mac or Windows. You can use iPads, you can use Android devices, and you can use other smartphones as well. So really there are a lot of options for how you answer the quiz. Um, and as I said, lots of fun. Before you get started on setting up your own Kahoot quiz, my biggest tip is to search, search, search. Search for ones that have already been created. There's a huge library online of quizzes that other teachers have set up all around the world. And it's not just music teachers, of course, using Kahoot. There's teachers from all subject areas. So you need to put a few keywords in that make sense. Um, so that example that I gave earlier, uh, I can search for major key signatures signatures or just key signatures or I could search for time signatures or instruments of the orchestra and so on and see what else is out there. It's much easier to start with someone else's quiz that they've set up a, at least a little bit and then add to it or adjust it from there than it is to start from scratch, particularly if the one you find already has some things in it like images or links to videos and so on. When you find one that you like, if it's someone else's quiz, you actually duplicate it. You don't change their quiz at all. You actually duplicate it for yourself and then you make adjustments and it gets saved to your account. So you set up your own free account on the Kahoot website and you need to do that so that you can log back in and find any quizzes that you've set up yourself and any favourite quizzes that you might have found and, and saved to your account too. I just mentioned the favourite button and that reminds me that when you do find one that you've um, found in a search result, someone else's quiz, I would click the favourite button straight away so that you can find it later on. A couple of times I've found one which I thought was really good and then kept looking because for some reason I have in my head that there's always going to be a better option out there and then I go back to find that first one because I think no, that was probably the best option and then I can't find it because there's so many quizzes in there. So click the favourite button straight away. You can always unfavorite it later on if you want to sort of get rid of it out of your account. That's easy. Um, but do that straight away and then it's just there for you to use. I'll give you a couple of examples in the show notes so that you can see um, one or two that I've created and some other ones that I found that other teachers have created. And also give you a link or two to a couple of articles about Kahoot that I've found online. One last thing I'll mention about Kahoot uh, before I leave it, it's actually really easy for students to set up their own quizzes and this can be a great way for you to check their learning kind of from a different angle in a way. Students can be each assigned some kind of quiz to do with a topic that they've been studying and set that quiz up and then quiz each other on the topic. Now my own son, my eldest son, has been doing this at his school. The teachers in his class, um, the teacher of his class I should say, uh, was having the students create quizzes about a unit of work that they were studying at the time. And then they each uh, you know, run the quizzes with each other to test their knowledge. So it's a great way setting up a quiz for 
the purpose of teaching someone else also teaches the person that's setting up too. So it's a great exercise for students. The second free tool that I want to talk about is called Plickers. And Plickers is um, useful. It's a different type of quizzing tool. Plickers is a sort of a shortened version of saying paper clickers. And it allows the teacher to capture student answers really fast and very little technology is required for this one. So actually only the teacher needs to have the technology. So as a teacher, you would need to have a laptop and a device of, of any type. And then you can uh, set up the quiz and also run the quiz in class time. So in terms of technology and students answering the questions, students are actually going to hold up a piece of paper which submits their answer to the teacher and it's a special piece of paper. So when you go to the Plickers website and set up your quiz, you actually print out a set of paper cards that have a code printed on them. I'm going to call it a code. It, it, it's not a barcode. You can't really call it a barcode because it doesn't have bars, but it, it's sort of a funny shape which is scannable by your device, by your smartphone or by your iPad. And the printed code on the piece of paper has four sides to it and each side has a letter, a letter A, B, C or D. Now if the student wants to answer letter A for their question, so it's, this is a multiple choice question scenario, if the answer that they want to submit is letter A, they just need to hold their card up with the A at the top. And then when you go and scan all of the cards that the students are holding up in your class, it will pick up the fact that the student is holding up their card with the letter A to the top. Now, the great thing about this, um, apart from the fact that all the students don't need to have their own technology, is that the letters are really, really small on the cards. So it allows the students to answer anonymously. You know, this can be a quite an important thing, particularly with middle school students. They don't maybe want everybody knowing what they're answering or they're a little bit uh, worried about answering the wrong thing and they might want to check and answer the same as everybody else. Well, it's almost impossible to read these tiny letters um, from any type of distance. So this way, everybody is choosing their own answer and holding it up and only the teacher's going to know who's submitted which answers. Now, the way they submit their answers, um, as I mentioned, they hold up this card with the code on it. And as a teacher, you stand at the front of the room with your device. So I use my iPhone usually. I open up the Plickers app. And once the question uh, is showing on the board, the, the students all hold up their card to answer the question. And I just have to hold up my phone. And when, when I activate the Plickers app and say that I want to scan the answers, it's like I'm looking through my camera. I put my phone up and I, um, I scan around the room. And as I'm going over each of the cards that the students are holding up in the class, I can see on my iPhone that the Plickers app is registering each one of those answers. Funnily enough, it actually tells you instantly whether the student has the answer right or wrong because it flashes green on my phone if they've got it correct and it flashes red if they are incorrect. Now, you don't have to share that information with the students, but it does pop up straight away for you. So you can get an instant um, an instant feeling for whether the class is understanding what you're talking about because as you're scanning, you'll see straight away, you know, out of 25 kids, you, you can see instantly that, say, three of them have the question wrong. And it can be really, really useful. Plickers work really well for young students who might not be able to easily read text-based questions on a screen. The teacher could say the question out loud and then the students just need to hold up their card to indicate the answer. One of the only drawbacks so far that I've found with Plickers, and um, I don't think that this has changed recently, I'm hoping it, it will change at some point in the future, is that you can't seem to share quizzes with other teachers. So if you've set up one yourself, there doesn't seem to be a way to share that yet with other teachers, but I've noticed that it's a very popular request online, so I'm hoping that they will actually add that feature in, you know, at some time in the future. Once again, I'll give you a couple of article links in the show notes that will give you some examples of Plickers being used in the music classroom, and you can see them in action there. After the break, I'll share the next two assessment tools, including one that allows you to add questions right inside a video, which is super useful. 
This episode of the Music Tech Teacher Podcast is brought to you by the Midnight Music Community. The Midnight Music Community is an online space for music teachers who'd like help using technology in their music lessons. There are online courses, video tutorials, lesson plans, music tech news, and professional development certificates are provided for any training that you undertake. I'm inside the community every day, personally answering members' questions and sharing tips and ideas. The best thing is that you get to connect with hundreds of other music teachers just like you and share your own experiences and occasional music tech frustrations. For more information and a special joining price just for the listeners of this podcast, visit midnightmusic.com.au forward slash podcast offer. That's midnightmusic.com.au forward slash podcast offer. Welcome back to the show. Before the break, we talked about Kahoot and Plickers, two options for quizzing students during class time. Let's take a look at two more. The third one I want to mention is called Socrative, and it's a really versatile assessment tool which allows you to run interactive quizzes with students. It allows you to set up different types of quizzes, including multiple choice questions or long form answers. And it has a couple of other modes as well. You can set up an exit ticket, so a really speedy assessment for the conclusion of a lesson. Or you can use the space race feature and that format allows you to run your quiz as a a race, a little bit more like the style of Kahoot where um, students can play individually or they can play in teams and answer questions that way. There's also this quick question mode, which is really good. It just takes a couple of seconds to set up, so it doesn't even need to be something that you set up ahead of class time. You can type in a really quick question straight away into Socrative while you're, you know, during class time. And that allows you to poll students on the fly as it was and and gauge how they're going in the middle of class time. Now, Socrative requires all students to have a device to answer the questions. Um, But once again, they can use any type of device. So Mac or PC, laptop, um, it could be a Chromebook or a smartphone or an iPad. And I think one of the best things is that you don't necessarily need to have all the students take the quiz at the same time. So if you have a a small number of laptops or iPads in your classroom, you could actually rotate students through the quiz activity. And that means that you can just have a very limited number of devices and still be able to um, have all of the students answer the quiz on an individual basis. The last tool I want to talk about is called PlayPosit, and this is the one that involves video. There's so much awesome video content available nowadays on the internet, and resources like PlayPosit, which used to be called Educanon, this one allows teachers to make video watching a little bit more meaningful for students because you can actually embed questions right inside the video itself. It saves you having to give students a printed quiz or a worksheet, which would require them to follow along with the video and work out which part of the video you're actually talking about when you want to ask them a question. In this case, when students watch the video using the PlayPosit tool, the video will actually pause when it reaches one of your questions and the students will answer the question right on the screen next to the video. When they've finished answering, they can then press play again to watch the next part of the video. For this reason, I think this is a really great uh, tool for things like critical listening activities. So if you've got a music performance on YouTube and you want the students to answer questions about that music performance, it might be an orchestral performance of something or a pop band doing something, um, you can actually have PlayPosit pause and ask them the question right at the specific point of time in the music itself. Also really good for music history and theory activities and even things like playing techniques. You might have a video of uh, an instrument um, playing technique and you want students to answer questions about that. Once you've logged into PlayPosit, um, when you set up your account and you go to set up a quiz, you can basically select a video from YouTube or Vimeo which will embed in the PlayPosit format And then you can go ahead and add your multiple choice questions. So while you're setting it up, you actually press play on the video and then you hit the pause button 
and tell PlayPosit which type of question you want to add in at that point. So you can choose from a multiple choice question, you can do longer form questions and so on. And my biggest tip is that um, I found that there's this feature called reflective pause because when I was setting up a couple of example videos that were to do with listening and questions associated to what students were listening to, I found I, I really wanted to warn the people watching the video, students, or it, in this case, it was teachers in a workshop. I wanted to warn them about what they needed to listen to in the next section and then have the video play and then ask the question after the section had played through. It's very difficult to ask a, a listening type question where, you know, the part of the video will play and at the end of that, you ask a question about what the students have just heard. Sometimes they, they would go, oh, well, I need to kind of listen to that again now that I know what the question is. So with the reflective pause feature, you can actually add um, a pause into the video with some text, which the students will read. But it doesn't require them to answer a question at that point. It just asks them to, you know, whatever I type in, it will say something like, listen to the next section that's coming up and identify the instrument that's playing the solo. And then the video would continue playing. And then at the right time, the actual question will pop up saying, which was the instrument that played the solo in the section that you just heard? And then there will be the space for the students to answer the question. So I found that that worked a lot better. It, um, it made a lot more sense uh, from a testing point of view. So because students can answer questions uh, for this quiz independently and in their own time, it makes a really good activity for a substitute teacher. Uh, so if you know that you are going to be away from class coming up and you have the time to set up one of these quizzes, you could do that ahead of time and then just assign it for the students while the substitute teachers are taking care of your class. You can also use it in the same way as a centre or a rotational activity in class time. So you could have a, a laptop or a few devices set up in one corner of the classroom. And when students get to that activity, they can answer the, the quiz questions on PlayPosit and then move on to the next activity after that. So really, really useful tool love using it and once again like Kahoot um, this is one where you can share quizzes or look for quizzes that other teachers have already set up so um, I would go straight into the library and have a look and see what's already there see if there's anything useful that you can use and maybe adjust for your own purposes or if you're setting up your own quiz from scratch it's fantastic if you can set it to be a public shareable quiz you have the option of making it um, private or public um, great if you can share it because then uh, we all benefit from each other's quizzes that way. And once again, I'll link to an example or two in the show notes for PlayPosit. And um, I've got an example there, which I've set up, which you can have a look at, which is to do with film scoring. I hope you enjoyed hearing about some of my favourite assessment tools. And your action step for today's episode is to choose one of those tools and try it with your students. If you're not sure which one to choose, I would go for Kahoot because it's lots of fun, uh, like the game show quiz thing. Um, students love it instantly. I can guarantee that they'll love it. So go ahead and give that one a go and let me know how you go. The Music Tech Teacher podcast is hosted by me, Katie Wardrobe a music tech trainer, consultant and speaker from Melbourne, Australia. You can find more information and links from today's episode at midnightmusic.com.au forward slash three. Thanks for listening.